Hey guys, welcome back. Steve here with Six Star Automotive. Today I'm going to talk about a very tiny but very important component. We kind of went over this a little bit when I did my ABS video, but I'm going to go into a bit more detail today. Before we get started, please like, subscribe, and join me as we talk about wheel bearings. curious about a lot of things when I was a kid. And one of the things was how does a wheel that is still connected to the vehicle spin as fast as it does without just falling off? Well, the way that it does it is this part of my hand right here. Most modern cars use what's called a integrated wheel bearing hub assembly. Vehicles used to use tapered roller bearings around a spindle that was connected to the knuckle. And that's how it was able to spin the wheels and those bearings were serviceable. But all the complexity and parts necessary to make that design function are actually more expensive than this little guy right here. A lot of people complain they don't make things like they used to, but in this case it's actually a very good thing. This bearing is a relatively small part, but it does a very large and very crucial job. These things can hold thousands of pounds per bearing and are under the constant stresses of the vehicle turning, braking, and accelerating. The majority of modern wheel bearing hub assemblies nowadays will incorporate or be connected very close to the ABS system. Either the tone ring or the sensor can be inside the wheel bearing itself. A problem with the wheel bearing can cause intermittent operation of the system or even deactivation entirely. One of the common themes in a lot of my videos so far is the emphasis on quality. So the precision in the machining necessary to make these bearings last is extremely important. The tolerances can be in the micron range. So getting a cheap bearing can very easily be more expensive than getting an expensive bearing. But even the best bearings out there aren't going to last forever. You can plan on replacing them about every 100,000 miles or so. Uh, there's other things that I'll explain in just a second that can make that less. So like I was saying at the beginning of this video, these wheel bearings go through a lot. Let's take a look at this. So even though these wheel bearings are sealed units, it's not uncommon for water to make its way in past those seals and get into those bearings themselves. Unfortunately, because the tolerances are so tight, you can't really coat the bearings in anything to keep them rust resistant. So if any water gets in there at all, it's going to chew up that bearing pretty fast. And it's an exponential kind of positive feedback loop problem. You know, so the water that gets inside the bearing sits in one spot and causes corrosion. As the bearings go past it, it tears pieces off and that causes pitting. The more the bearing goes past it, the more heat is developed and then the more exponential the failure becomes. And bearings can go from good to bad relatively quickly. So speaking of that, what is it about North Idaho that's so hard on wheel bearings? Well, I've got four things for you. Number one is the rough roads. There's rough roads everywhere, but up here specifically, a lot of people drive on gravel and dirt roads. Uh, you know, if you think about it, it's not that difficult to understand the suspension taking a bit of a pounding when you're going through washboard and dirt roads and gravel. Uh, but the wheel bearings have to deal with the same amount of stress. Everything that the shock absorbers and the sway bars have to deal with has to go through that bearing first. Number two is the harsh winters that we've got. Even though the last couple of winters haven't been all that bad, we still put a fair amount of magnesium chloride or even just standard sodium chloride road salt on the roads. As that salt slurry gets splattered all over the place, it's going to make it onto the backs of the axles, kind of get caked into the wheels, especially if you're driving through snow, and then you drive on the, on the main roads where it's more slush. The snow gets packed into the inside of your wheels, the slushy salt brine water gets splashed and soaked into the salt, and then it stays there right on the back of your axles and your hubs. That can cause corrosion and deterioration of the metal around the sealing surfaces of this hub, like right here. If that sealing surface gets damaged, water is going to get in through that seal and then corrode out the bearing internally. Number three is suspension and even alignment issues. This may not seem like something right off the top of your head that would make a whole lot of sense, but if you think about it, if the wheel is pushed sideways because of a bad alignment, the bearing is the first thing to take that torquing effect, and it's going to add more wear and tear than is necessary if the wheels were perfectly straight, or if you didn't have failed suspension components that's allowing all this excessive rocking and bouncing and moving, the bearing is not going to have as much force to deal with, and it's going to last longer. Number four, the most obvious thing, just heavy loads. Because we are in an area that's known for its recreational activities, uh, vehicles tend to get packed pretty heavy, full of camping gear, hiking equipment, and, and all the stuff necessary to go and do those activities. Mountain bikes, racks, uh, sky boxes, all that stuff. All that adds weight, and weight adds strain to the wheel bearings. So that's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I've got lots more on there. As usual, give me some comments. Give me some more ideas, anything you want to hear. I'm thinking about doing a, a kind of a technical series. 
But uh, yeah, again, thanks for watching. And remember, you can always come by and experience the six star difference for yourself. Mm -hmm.